in Buenos Aires. She speaks four languages and specializes in watercolors, mixed media, acrylic, and sacred geometry. Wow, that's fantastic. We love that. Let's give it up for Jennifer Roberts. Hey, Jen, go get it. Okay, guys, once again, you'll have 20 minutes to throw down, and all of these lovely people around here will be able to check out your artwork. So, we got the timer up. Wonderful, Mikey. Thank you so much. Let's get Art Battle ready going in five, four, three, two, one. Art Battle, round one. All right, we are on, and Art Battle round number one has just started in San Francisco, and these guys are off to an excellent start. I am so excited to see what they come up with tonight. Uh, my name is Morgan Booth, and I'm here with Tyson Cody. Hey, Tyson. Hey, Morgan. Thank you so much. It is exciting to be here virtually watching in at this amazing event. It's always so exciting. Art Battle is a fantastic event, so thanks everybody at home for tuning in. Uh, we have some pretty excellent artists lined up for you guys tonight as well. Uh, and we have our first six stepping up to the easels. They got 20 minutes only on the clock. And for those who are not familiar with Art Battle, we're gonna have our first six artists in round number one, another six artists in round number two, and then the top two artists from each round as voted by you, the audience, will move forward into a four artist final showdown. Uh, right now we're checking out Joseph Shook, who uh, is holding his canvas in a really interesting way. I don't think I'm used to seeing this. Are you Shook, would you say? I'm Shooketh, I'm Shook, <laughs> Shooketh. <laughs> It looks yeah, like well, he's like using it as a desk. Yeah, I see. And it's always so exciting to see the different approaches that these painters bring to the uh, to the stage here at Art Battle. And, uh, you know, Joseph is a perfect example. And starting off with a pencil drawing, it looks like as well, which is um, always a, a, an interesting approach and, and start off to a, an image. Yeah, I'm really digging uh, this use of technique of him just leaning it as if he's drawing on a, a drafting table and just seeming so chill about it. Um, and yeah, maybe a little bit of a bridge going down with some graphite. Could be. Ooh, bringing in the blue. Coming in hot with the cool blue. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna go uh, a little landscapey with that piece, and I'm I'm here for it. All right. I believe that this is. Uh, not sure which artist this is yet, but I feel like it could be Wendy Trapner. Um, but anyway, they are working on the floor and have just so much paint already down on the canvas. I uh, really just loving that this artist is just completely going for it yes no kidding they are wasting no time whatsoever so much of the canvas has already been hit with paint with still 17 minutes and 30 seconds left so you know we shall see where uh where she takes it yeah so much time left on the clock and so much paint has already been applied at this point it uh makes me wonder whether or not she's going to encounter any difficulties navigating so much wet paint. What do you think? You know, that's a great question. Um, and certainly a lot of paint at that. Uh, you know, only time can really say here, Morgan, and I'm excited to find out exactly uh, what transpires uh, this round here. Ooh, and it looks like we're getting some really interesting uh, textural application techniques here with uh, this dragging of the palette knife. Yes, indeed. The painter's sword. The painter's sword. <laughs> uh, here we are with Jess Bolt. Who, oh my uh, God. Go for it. Go for it. Is this a bird's eye view of, this, of a cityscape? Is this San Francisco that we're looking at in bird's eye view? I think it is. I think she's, that she's collaged a map on here. How cool is that? Oh my gosh. That is a, a cool power move. And, you know, this really speaks to the excitement of live painting when uh, yeah, a painter really brings something that has a wow factor off the bat. And, you know, and that's exactly the kind of strategy and approach that will, you know, often serve a painter well in the boat, of course, because this is a ruthless competition. and. 
Uh, everybody at home listening, do tune in to artbattle.com slash AB2479 to cast your votes each and every round. It really matters. Yes, every single vote counts. We are often hearing from our voting managers that uh, it can really be neck and neck. So uh, you guys have lots of time to decide still, but make sure that you brace yourself for having to choose one, one artist to vote for. Absolutely. And this is a very interesting uh, abstract uh, composition here. Loving the, I guess it could be a cityscape, isn't it? Maybe against the water? Oh, good eye. I don't think I would have caught that. I think that you're right that we're going uh, abstract, but also cityscape. And this is Wendy Trapner. And Wendy uh, has this really intensely textural way of painting. She often is incorporating um, using the impression of found objects as well. So I'm hoping that we see um, a little bit of weirdness from Wendy. I would love to see a weird object make an appearance. I'm loving this shot right now, seeing the contrast of these two painters at work. You know, over here, Wendy, we're seeing, uh, you know, maybe a more traditional abstract uh, painting. And then to the right, something quite unusual here from Jennifer. This yeah, is the very way that cool. she's using the directionality of the drips is so cool. I'm uh, sitting here watching and I've literally got my head tilted to the side. So this piece is already super engaging for the audience. Absolutely. Yeah, that was super cool. Yeah, it's interesting to see the uh, uh, opposing grip directions. And so, you know, we'll see if Jennifer even applies more uh, paint with lots of water to uh, to cause some more contrary drips. We shall see. Yeah, I love the way that they're kind of just crisscrossing over each other and creating this like really beautiful organic netting. Mm hmm. Well, there it is somewhat organic, isn't it? It almost looks like moss hanging from trees. Yeah. Oh, totally. I totally see that now. That's one of my favorite things about um, abstract work is that we're always, our brains are always seeking representation within abstract. And so there's so much opportunity to see different things. Everybody's going to see something different. That's a great point. Absolutely. The inclination to derive meaning, but uh, especially in, in abstract, uh, you know, paintings, it often just doesn't mean anything specific. <laughs> your brain just gets the opportunity to kind of dance around it. And mm -hmm. uh, wow, gorgeous movement in this piece from Rosanna. Yeah, almost like a forced perspective bird's eye, uh, or not bird's eye, but fisheye lens. Um, it almost seems like, which is very cool and very engaging. Certainly a very dynamic, lively composition here. And, uh, and uh, an interesting little figure there in the distance hanging from an enchanted swing set. Now, this is a great, very intriguing picture here. How fun. I'm really loving this piece. And I, I love what you said about um, having that kind of fisheye perspective. And the way that everything is converging and the use of silhouettes here is almost reminding me of like classical silhouetted puppet theater. I don't know if anybody remembers that. Maybe my reference is too obscure. Hmm. I'm not so sure that is resonating at the moment, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, but that the gradient awesome. background is really gorgeous as well. Mm -hmm, it is. It's just a little whimsical and a little enchanted. Ooh, and we get to continue to be shook by uh, Joseph. I can't wait for him to step away and to see what we're what we're shaking with here. Mm hmm. No kidding. Oh, talking about gradient. Look how soft this is. Very soft. And, and it's uh, a little overexposed right now in the camera, so it's a little hard to decipher exactly the nuance of it, but um, I'm intrigued. Ooh. <laughs> we both almost made the exact same sound at the same time. We, just adding in <laughs> that little dash of color, I was just about to go, ooh, the yeah. exact same reaction. <laughs> I think I it's the appropriate reaction. And I, I have to assume that the, the viewers at home would, would have likely uh, said something similar in that in that very moment. If you said ooh in that moment, drop in the comments. Let us know if you are uh, <laughs> also in the same place as we are. We would love to hear from you. Oh, okay. So 
Joseph, I think, is doing a bridge. We already figured that out. And then we have uh, Anna, who was our artist that was on the floor, also doing a bridge. And then I'm pretty sure Jess around the side is doing a bridge as well. So we have uh, a night of bridges. Wow. No kidding. I guess it's, um, you know, the bridge is on the mind in San Francisco. The bridge is on the mind. We have bridging, connecting to each other, referencing the city, all kind of uh, opportunity for us to uh, really interpret all of these pieces. Absolutely, you know, and um, it uh, certainly plays uh, plays well to the audience there present tonight um, to appeal to them to uh, try to gather some of those votes tonight and also for the auction because, uh, you know, who wouldn't want a, uh, a beautiful painting of a bridge on your wall? And you indeed could have these paintings on your wall. You can cast your votes in our in our auction at artbattle.com slash AB2467. I just am really uh, falling in love with the way that Anna has executed the red of the bridge. It's just this careful line work uh, and there's something about the way that she's just kind of put it in so roughly that is really working for me. We have a lot of smoothness going on in the sky and then this interruption of the strong red, really boldly applied. Absolutely, and, and uh, she's also um, added some accents along the, uh, the right side of the structure to indicate as though uh, it's catching some sunlight. Oh, good cat. Oh, and here we go. Okay, Jess. Jess is not playing. She is uh, very serious up at the easel tonight. She came uh, right in with the conceptual approach as well. Absolutely. That certainly elevates the piece to, uh, in terms of, uh, just as you said, the, uh, the conception of it. It's very cool. And I think that she's using um, either charcoal or maybe some sort of chalk pastel. Mm. And she really little... that line very nicely there. Mm -hmm. The we're getting those uh, the cables connecting the bridge, and I love how close we are seeing her reference versus the painting. Like it's to the same scale even, and so we're really getting this quite literal opportunity to see the translation of the reference through the artist's brain into their hand onto the canvas that's very true yeah and it's um uh, and again you know just the different approaches some people choose to have a reference photo and you know some do don't and some are going more abstract from the imagination and uh, here jess is certainly paying a great deal of attention to the detail and form that is depicted and I don't even think we've chatted yet about her use of tape here. We've got uh, some surprising shapes that she's made with tape. And I'm not sure uh, how that's going to be revealed. You're right. And I think that might be a little bit of foreshadowing, perhaps. She might even take some splashes of color across this canvas before the night is done, before the round is done. Seven minutes left, perhaps some paint and then peeling back that those uh, those tapes, you know, we shall see. I love a good tape pull. It's uh, it's one of my favorite, most satisfying moments of art battle. Exactly. And another great strategy to rack up those votes. That wow. Totally. Factor. The audience loves uh, a tape pull, especially when it's uh, just that clean, satisfying goodness back with Wendy here and it's so abstract but I also think that you were totally spot on in the way that you called it of being um, a cityscape that is reflected in the water mm -hmm. absolutely there's something perhaps familiar about this kind of theme uh, you know coming from Vancouver as I do you know the uh, celebration of the balance between the city and the water is familiar and poignant isn't it just so wonderful the way that uh, these works can really kind of evoke different memories as well from different people? Like 
I love that that's uh, bringing memories uh, of a certain place for you. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, isn't that the power of art? The power of art. Oh man, I'm so excited about, about this pink. Yeah, look at that. Jennifer Roberts. I also really love these just big, bold swipes of color. And I kind of can't believe how strong this yellow is over top of all of those uh, blue drips. Great opacity there. Mm hmm. And I really love the uh, the contrasting um, directionality of them. It's sort of is another element of uh, tension that I think is present in this painting, given the, for one thing, the asymmetry of it, and then also the contrasting drip directions. There's, you know, something going on here. That's for sure. Tension. That's such a, a great element to point out. And something that I think a lot of artists um, tend to underutilize in their work, especially at Art Battle. We think of about movement and composition and stuff like that, but uh, often creating that sense of tension, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what creates that, but it can really introduce such an engaging factor in a piece. Mm-hmm. And uh, since the last go round here, uh, Rosanna has added a display of shooting stars. Enchanting. And so subtle too. Uh, I think it's really easy when you're working in uh, heavy black and white and when, especially when you're working with night sky to kind of overdo it and overblow it. But uh, just this tiny little dashes of uh, the shooting stars, just such a nice subtle addition. Absolutely. We are entering into our final minutes. We have just under four minutes remaining on the clock and voting is open at artbattle.com slash AB2467. So make sure that if you're not registered to vote yet, head on over there and enter your phone number uh, and you will choose your favorite artist of who you want to move on to our final round. Uh, okay, so not a bridge. I think that it's the top of a carousel. Left. Oh. I like it. I like it. Maybe? I was thinking it might be some sort of ornate pizza, but maybe that's just because <laughs> I'm hot. I would eat that. I would eat that ornate pizza. But uh, I, kind of... I feel like it, it's like almost like the edge of this nostalgic oh. uh, photograph. Yes. yes, 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 a carousel. The I one that goes, so. not, not uh, with like the horses. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Would, Interesting. Would love to hear from uh, you guys in the comments of what you think Joseph's piece is, uh, and if you think it's a carousel, if you think that it is another object. And back with Anna and our super strong bridge here. Yeah, and I'm loving the uh, attention to detail with the cables, the vertical cables that she's added. Um, they're adding a nice um, contrast on the yellow street. Sort of a striping effect. Yeah, I love that. It's such a, a, a small detail, but it makes such a huge difference. And yeah. uh, it really just continues to underline this textural component that Anna has going on in this piece. Yeah, and it's these kinds of elements that uh, the artists will be bringing in the last couple minutes of this first round of Art Battle San Francisco. Sort of the season opener, you were saying earlier. Um, the first time that they have uh, uh, had an Art Battle in San Francisco since, uh, when was it exactly? Uh, in late March, we had the San Francisco City Finals. And yeah. uh, that one artist went to U.S. Nationals. That was Mona Faroki. And uh, so this is our first time holding uh, an art battle in this new season. So starting tonight, we will have our first qualifying artist uh, who will qualify for the 2024 San Francisco City Championship. 
Perfect, and perhaps that is the theme of the bridges, the uh, um, bringing, uh, bridging the past into the future. Love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is fun. I love uh, some good brush lashing where mm. we're just getting this like directional spattering. Yes, I love it. And these are the, the final exciting moments where, you know, artists can really pull out some surprising moves. All right. I think we're a few seconds ahead on our timer. Uh, that marks the end of our very first round of our season opener of Art Battle in San Francisco. So now is your job, viewers, to vote at artbattle.com slash AB2467 and, of course, participate in the auction as well. All of these works are available for silent auction at that same link. You don't need to be in the room to collect. We will ship them to you. Uh, any favorites from this round, Tyson? Great question. I was just thinking about that. Hmm. Well, you know, um, hmm. Let's see. Jeff Bolt really, you know, came in strong with that conceptual piece with the map and the, uh, on the bridge in the foreground. I think that'll certainly uh, do well for, you know, pleasing this audience here in San Francisco. Uh, and of course, Rosanna here with a very interesting and intriguing uh, environment that she has invited the audience to view. Yeah, it's Art just so immersive. Uh, mm -hmm. the do you have Have you got a favorite, would you say? Um, honestly, I'm really here for Joseph. It's such a minimalist piece. And the reveal factor for me uh, of this being a carousel, or at least that being my impression of it, uh, was really cool. I feel like there's a sense of nostalgia there. And uh, I just love that treatment. And uh, I would say that this piece from Anna was a standout for me as well, uh, especially when we were noting that we were seeing those just amazing cable lines literally carved into the piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love the uh, flashes of color on the water as well. I didn't really notice that before. Oh, so good. So good. This is one of those pieces that you could just continue to find little, little uh, fun moments in it. I think you were really onto something there about uh, Joseph and the minimalism of of the uh, of the carousel. You know, just doing a lot with a little, which is a real um, sign of control and skill in, a, in an artist's approach. I think you know to not feel they need to do build the whole canvas with action. You know, to you know show some restraint, and I, I think that's an interesting aspect of that. Such a good point. And uh, I feel like we also have some elements of restraint here from Jess in that I think that what she was doing with the tape uh, was a reveal of like a Polaroid shape. But I also am mm -hmm. really liking the composition within a composition and the way that she's created so much breathing room for this. Next up, this artist is a Brooklyn born and raised artist. Coming from a family of artists, Legacy Kid, he has attended both art high school and college. At college, he learned about the concept of Afrofuturism. Since then, he has been dedicated to the creation of arts that reflects both science and social justice perspectives. Wonderful. Give a big round of applause for Samuel M. Walker. Yes. Our next artist. I love this bio. This artist once got expelled from school for doing graffiti, and now he makes a career out of it. He just does what he does and hopes to make it look dope as possible. This is his second time in our battle. Give it up for Ryan Schumann. I mean, I mean, my team keeps saying, be gay, do crime. Do crime, do graffiti, do art, do it all. Hi, Ryan. Our final artist, this artist was raised in Compton, California. He is self-taught and began his art at age six. 
He focuses on drawing and painting, but also uses digital media. Give it up for our last artist, Anthony King. All right. And is our wild card ready? Anthony. Oh, she's getting her paints. She's getting ready. But we know we're going to give her all. Oh, there she is, our wild card. Yes. Natalie. Welcome. Now, give some extra special love to her because it is brave as hell to just go to an event and be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be a part of this. Oh, she brought her smock. Mm. She came prepared. You knew you were gonna get drawn, didn't you? What a smock! All right, I guess I'll, I guess I'll give you back the mic. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. All right, all right. Artists, are we ready? Put your little hands in the air if you are ready. Yes, yes. Almost there. Boil card, are you ready? Yeah, 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 you're ready. You got this. All right. Let's go counterclockwise with that slow, beautiful crawl, my friend. Please, please don't just stand in one place. It makes it difficult. In five, four, three, two, one. All right, we have just begun round number two of our battle in San Francisco. My name is Morgan Booth, and I am here with the one, the only, all-around creative dude, Tyson Cody. Welcome, Tyson. Thank you so much, Morgan. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Here we are, the second round of the night, looking at Sabrina Evans. Very confident streak there directly across the canvas. What she's depicting, only time and talent can tell. <laughs> what an intro. I love that. But I feel like... Okay, so I've seen uh, Sabrina, aka her artist name, SAB. Uh, I've seen her paint quite a few times, and she often goes very uh, body-focused. So I think maybe these two abstract lines could be maybe depicting some feminine curves. Indeed, they're becoming less abstract with every stroke. Over cool, here with cool. Dakota Crawford. Uh, first off, excellent jacket, Dakota. We love it. Uh, and this oh, yeah. is, I think, Dakota's sixth art battle. Okay. So no yeah. stranger to the canvas, no stranger to the battlefield of art battle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am super excited to see Dakota Paint because uh, I was reading up on her today and something that she was saying is that she's studying to be an astro astrophysicist and that kind of space influence often shows up in her work. So looking forward to seeing if that uh, makes it to the easel today. Ooh, exciting. And Samuel has coming come in so strong on this uh you know just over a minute into the uh, into the round here and so much of the canvas has been covered with this rich blue hue yeah this just this blue is just jumping out and grabbing you it's uh super vibrant and i think is going to be a really good strategy to get people on his side from the start you know people are already like whoa what's going on over there Absolutely. Blue is truly a crowd pleaser. Ooh, and we got some tape Don't lines for on the other primary colors. <laughs> Don't even get me started on red. <laughs> yellow? Oh, here we got it. We got a little yellow now here. Oh. Yes, love yellow. Such even tape lines here from Ryan, and I believe that this is his second art battle. And uh, something really fun that our announcer said was uh, that Ryan was once expelled for graffiti and now makes his living off of it. Hey. Gotta love that. Nice. Love that. Making oh, it work with what he's got. And what he's got is certainly an interesting approach to the canvas. Very exciting and engaging to see. 
I'm really jazzed that Ryan is, uh, he's brought these tape lines all the way over the edge and he's already uh, painted and treated the edge. I feel, I have high expectations from Ryan just from that, uh, bringing it over to the side move. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, totally. And Anthony King with coming in hot with a very intriguing skull face. Yeah, giving us that strong symbology right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And we've talked often about how, uh, you know, coming in strong with uh, a very identifiable, um, you know, symbol symbolism or uh, image like that can, you know, play in a person's favor or it can play against, you know, or we got to just hope there are some uh, people who appreciate the macabre in the audience tonight. Yeah, are they going to be contemplating life and death as they w look on at uh, Anthony creating his piece? Well, I suppose at the best of times, art has the power to make a person ponder those such themes. And maybe Anthony King will uh, evoke those in uh, the viewers at home. And uh, if you are watching tonight, be sure to cast your votes at artbattle.com slash AB2467. Okay, and here we are with our wild card artist. I believe her name is Natalie, and Natalie got pulled from the crowd. She was not an artist who was pre-registered to paint. Uh, she just put, was brave enough to put her name in the hat, and she just got called up to the easel. Oh, that is so exciting. Uh, and, you know, just another one of those great elements of art battle, you know, that surprise factor. and. Here she is painting a very lovely ocean scene. I'm transported. Yeah, we're getting uh, this soft brushwork, kind of bringing all of these colors in from the sides. Back with Sabrina yep. here. Ooh, I'm liking it. Yeah, I think that this is... Uh, crowd-pleasing imagery here. I think uh, what's not to like here, yeah, uh, you know, a, a person in motion, you know, looks to be uh, perhaps even dancing. Who knows? For me, this line, the central line that's running the length of the torso is so interesting and makes it, uh, adds that kind of complicating factor that makes it just a little bit more engaging than a regular um, bodyscape. You're right, you know, with the, it, it almost makes the, uh, the the figure abstracted, even though we know what we're looking at. There, mm -hmm. there, yeah. mm -hmm. kind of just appreciate the shapes and the form even more so than the person necessarily. And that little hit of pink that's just kind of Creeping up over the front is really beautiful as well. Just a, a little subtle pop of color. Uh, I think that Sabrina is going to be a fan favorite, and we are only uh, not even seven minutes fully in. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to be right about that. Back with so Dakota. Is Dakota working all in white so far? It's hard to say. Wouldn't that would, that would make sense? Currently, yeah, because be can't drawing. see anything. I would. Uh, I'm assuming that she's working all in white, but how how crazy would it be also if there was just no paint and she would just been like miming painting the whole time? I don't think I she's doing. That. That, but I think it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm with that. I, 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 until I can actually see anything on the canvas, um, I'm going to go with that because that's a really hilarious plot. <laughs> performance art battle. Yes. Well, I mean, the, the jacket is almost performative. Okay, now there's color. I'm seeing... That, yep, no. Dakota is definitely doing a painting here. This is not uh, performance art. And, uh, and what a color it is that we are uh, finally able to appreciate on that canvas there. Yeah, that splash of turquoise. Uh, Beautiful. Ooh, Samuel, interesting uh, evolution here of this piece. I think that we've got um, perhaps an underwater scene here. Totally nautical. Totally nautical. 
I'm definitely getting uh, Finding Nemo vibes here. Mm-hmm. I was almost uh, getting a little bit of Avatar, the, the new film with all of the interesting underwater creatures. I don't know if you've seen it, but so there's, something with, there's something magical going on here. Yeah, I'm uh, feeling very intrigued with this. Uh, I'm really enjoying the way that Samuel is uh, depicting light and how all of the light is just so blued out by uh, it being filtered, the color being filtered through the water. Mm-hmm. There's a bit of, there's definitely some depth that it creates, you know, and a sort of a curiosity about what's beyond. Oh, okay. So here for it. So here for it. So Ryan has done his tape poll already, and now we're getting this just beautiful, intricate typography going on. Yeah, it's elegant and uh, very well uh, spaced out. Clearly, he's done a lot of uh, practicing of, of those. It's uh, really nicely balanced as well. And I love the, the contrast of the... Uh, the white and dark hue. God damn, and what a steady hand. Oh my goodness. This is so crispy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crispy is right. And there's that, I really love that element of uh, graffiti uh, art that really kind of, uh, you know, it, it it's not even so much about the word itself or the meaning. Um, that the word has, uh, but just the execution of the line work uh, can be so expressive and so full of um, attitude and rebellion and uh, also elegance. I mean, this is sort of an old English um, style of typography. Tyson, you're so right. The uh, Everything that's going on with the line work of this typography because I, I can't see what it says yet, but I'm already a fan because the design element that is present here is uh, just very admirable. I'm, to be honest, I'm not usually a, a typography in painting at Art Battle fan, but it's really, really working, uh, really working for him. Mm -hmm. Anthony now adding in, um, I think, a floral on top of his skull, kind of just underlying that, uh, underlining that memento mori kind of vibe of life versus death. Is it a uh, butterfly? Could be uh, a flower. Butterfly, flower. We shall see. We shall tell him the time and tell him we'll say. We'll say. <laughs> I love that. I'm uh, <laughs> We're going to use that. We're going to use that. Perfect. It's a really cool uh, environment, though, there. What's the name of this venue again in San Francisco tonight? We are at the Great Northern, uh, and this is a venue that we have been at for quite some time. It is the home of our battle in San Francisco. And they well, even it looks have like a great event. It's Super fun. really fun. Great crowd um, in San Francisco. So if you are in the area and uh, watching with us online, thinking about whether or not you want to intend to attend in person, you should definitely go. It's super, super fun. Wild card. We've got uh, some narrative elements being introduced now with our rock and a little figure uh, sitting atop the rock. I'm feeling like this is a little bit of maybe an aerial homage. Mm, it could be. I was thinking about how the uh, peaceful scene and, and the calm light and calm water uh, really kind of evokes a sense of tranquility and then the addition of the rock and the lone figure uh, creates a sense of you know solitude which is appealing and that's kind of a nice effect that a painting can have and give you a sense of calm or uh, a moment of repose you know what I like yours better I retract my Disney comments well, even uh, on the close-up there, on the close-up there, it looked like it wasn't the mermaid. It looked like they had their, their in sort of crouching um, position, hugging the knees. And yeah. Ariel, Ariel did not have knees until much later in the film. 
This is true. But yeah, the uh, the stance of the figure is definitely giving that um, that sense of loneliness that uh, is being contrasted by our bright palette. Sabrina, mm -hmm. so I love the different uh, thicknesses of lines that she's using here. Yes, she's paid a close attention to thickness. And uh, I think the background is white and is painted at the same time. And I'm just enjoying the, the subtle way that Sabrina has uh, added that kind of finishing element to this piece. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a beautiful structure as well, I think, to the, uh, the panels of different hues that she's placed, you know, and there is um, sort of a limited color palette, but uh, she's done a lot with it. Absolutely. Uh, just using the subtlety to her advantage. Um, and Sabrina is a, where, a very well-versed art battle artist as well. She's painted in Los Angeles. Uh, in 2020, I think she actually painted in Bath uh, in the UK. So she is uh, taking over. Damn. Okay, so our color mystery um, from Dakota is now being unveiled. We've got all of this gorgeous teal and uh, some more, almost like an anemone going on, where uh, the artists are just oh, reading each other's you. minds tonight. We had so many bridges in the first round, and now we have two underwater scenes in our second round. Delightful. And with just about five minutes remaining on the clock, voting is now open for round number two. So head over to artbattle.com slash AB2467 to cast your vote. The top two artists from this round and from our previous round will move forward into the final. Well, I gotta That's stop talking because this is so cool. Yeah, no kidding. Oh. What in the world? Plot twist. Oh, is Total that like, plot twist. Is that like a barnacle or is that like a coral that she's revealing? It's so, I just love the technique and it's so completely unexpected. It's prime time for wow factors though, you know, in the last five minutes. Again, this is when the artists really pull out some, uh, some surprising maneuvers and can really take uh, their, their paintings to another level. Prime time for wow factors is totally correct. I'm actually wondering whether or not she's using um, something called masking fluid, which is uh, like a rubber paint that you paint on to the canvas. And then once it dries, you can peel it up and it will uh, have masked off anywhere that you painted it. That is very cool. Thanks for sharing that insight, didn't realize. Always here for the technical facts. And I'm here for the uh, <laughs> discourse. Yes, <laughs> you get points for dancing. I am getting Avatar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are unfamiliar creatures. Oh no, that's a crab down bottom left. Sort of crab's perspective, almost a, a David and Goliath uh, mythology being dropped upon here. Yeah, and we've got, I think, a little squid chasing um, our central creature here. Great use of perspective. I love that we're we are basically in the position of the crab looking up at all of these creatures. Crab's eye view. Yeah. A crab's eye view. Oh my gosh, Ryan. So clean. So clean. Crispus uh, hell. Sorry, what'd you say? I said I love the laurel. It almost looks like a kind of an, or an ornate just quiggle there on the uh, um, just, uh, almost, just below the top uh, writing there. Yeah, that compositional element just really breaks everything up and adds just even more style to a piece that is just uh, exuding so much style. Yeah, so true. And, and on the subject of composition, you know, the, the use of those little lines and that initial uh, paper reveal uh, was a really great approach to creating a, a very distinctive 
composition, composition here. And again, and again this is just, just two two pieces was a very, very bold choice as well. I, I am loving it. I'm really, really, really loving it. Uh, and I also feel like this is a really mature uh, method of painting for art battles. So many different techniques used with the masking, uh, the gradients, all of this clean line work. You know, this would uh, typically take Ryan, I'm, I'm sure, a long time in studio. And here we are getting to witness it in 20 minutes. So true. And I just think that this would have so many cool places to appear on a wall, you know, in like a tattoo shop or an auto body shop or in a, in a bar, you know, there's so many places that this art would be appreciated, I think. Anywhere that the badasses hang out. Anywhere where the cool kids are sitting. So if you're a cool kid and you are sitting and you want to gaze upon that piece in your own space, uh, make sure that you head over to artbattle.com slash AB2467 and bid on that in the auction. I know that I'm a little bit tempted, actually. Art could be yours. These arts could be yours hanging on your wallet at home. This awesome skull and butterfly? Yes, you called it. Perhaps I think we're going monarch here. here. Mm hmm. Ooh, I wonder if it's um, an homage to the uh, late deceased queen. The monarch is dead. Oh, interesting. I'm uh, gonna start having you write all my artist statements, Tyson. <laughs> uh, back to the moment of tranquility. Oh, getting our countdown here. Oh my gosh, down to the final okay, 10 guys, seconds. Again, it's your turn. Please vote for your favorite artist via your cell phone device. And also, these guys are finished. Wow, what a round. I feel uh, that we had so many different styles on view in, in this round in particular. I'm uh, really enjoying the variety that we've been treated to today. Absolutely. There, there was quite a bit of variety in this round, and uh, it was certainly quite the treat to see. And, um, and a, a lot of, uh, you know, fun individuals as well. That's another great aspect of the, uh, you know, live painting is to get to see these individuals in work, in action. And, uh, and uh, it's just been a pleasure to see. Oh, for sure. Seeing the different personalities that step up to the easels is definitely one of those uh, factors that continues to be such a joy at our battle, especially because realizing that art for artists can be quite isolating uh, and so to kind of be on display with not only their work but their personalities too is a very cool factor to enjoy. Very cool factor um, and I remember you talking about how it's so cool that you get to you know see these individuals painting and uh, creating a work of art before your eyes and then you can own this and you can have a piece of history basically I think you were saying when one uh, battle recently and I think that's a great way of looking at it you know that you can have these pieces of artwork um, that you got to witness coming to, into existence. Yeah it really represents this memory of the creation of the piece and also the memory of uh, the night, the occasion, uh, the support of that artist. Especially I love when uh, collectors buy from artists that they don't know. I think it's just such a wonderful way to connect with new people in this just such a unique way. Mm -hmm. oh, I so think nice highlights much. here. They might be manta rays, perhaps? The ones in the top? Might be like a flock of manta rays. You ever seen a flock of manta rays? Or a school of them? Okay. I can't say that I have. I cannot say that I have, but now perhaps I have. Now you have. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and again from Ryan, um, being completely transparent, I still have yet to um, figure out how to read it, but if you uh, have deciphered it in the comments, we would love to hear from you. I love the different textures as well that are happening in this. They're, the little white dots that are spattered across it are really what? neat. Yeah, I just noticed those. It's got a regality about it. 
the yes. whole thing. You know, it's really, it's it. it uh, you know, again, I don't know what the words are, but they look important. I'm gonna pause this later and come back to it and read it, or I'll just message Ryan. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely curious. Um, if anyone is actually curious about checking out any of the artists who've painted tonight and you want to uh, find them on Instagram, go to the Art Battle San Francisco Instagram account where we have shared all of their profiles and you can go support them by giving them a follow. And speaking of uh, social media presence, Tyson, where can our listeners find you on the internet? Well, you could scooch on over to my Instagram if you felt so inclined at Tyson Cody, it's T-Y-S-O-N-C-O-A-D-Y uh, on the old Instagram. And uh, yeah, would love to catch up there. And I am at Morgan Booth Art, if anyone is uh, curious about me. And Morgan shares just wonderful pieces of artwork and is a fantastic painter in her own right. So tune Thanks. in for a catch. And uh, Tyson and I will actually be hosting a live event on Tuesday for our Toronto show. We actually do the live stream uh, on site at the event. So that is always a really exciting and engaging uh, show to tune into. So make sure to uh, watch our socials and see us posting the link for the Art Battle Toronto show on Tuesday, April 25th. All right, we have just begun our third and final round of Art Battle in San Francisco. Up at the easels for our round number three, we have from round number one, Wendy Tratner, who did that incredible reflected cityscape, uh, and also Rosanna uh, Manorino, who did the wonderful silhouetted figure swinging from the tree. And from our second round, the finalists are Ryan Schumann, who did our incredible uh, graphic typography piece, and Sabrina, AKA Saab, who painted uh, the just really gorgeous female bodyscape. So here we are back up at the easels for our third and final round with 20 minutes on the clock. Very exciting to hear these finalists. They are quite a range and variety among them. Uh, so it'll be certainly very exciting to see uh, what transpires this final round. I am so excited to see what these artists' second offerings are gonna be because it's such a, it's huge creative expenditure uh, for them in, the, in their qualifying round and for them to have to get up to the easel and do it all over again is uh, I just can't wait to see what they do. Totally, and we were talking a little bit about that uh, that, that expenditure and the energy that is required uh, for these artists to uh, conjure up these works, to uh, imagine uh, something fresh right off the top of their head uh, and in front of an audience, no less. So it looks like the gimbal's gone awry and we are back. <laughs> Uh, so many exciting elements uh, at play when you are watching live artwork, uh, let alone a live stream. Uh, I love what Wendy is doing right now with these very translucent, streaky strokes over top of each other. Love the streaky strokes, absolutely. And that's, ooh. Yeah, and no kidding. And, and so much uh, has been communicated right now as far as the composition already. Um, and still there's so much of this round left uh it's so exciting to uh imagine where this might go and the the layering of this blue with the black over top of it for whatever reason it's just very satisfying there's like a tranquility here 
absolutely. I think you're right. Uh, yeah, that blue. I think I think you and I have a bias towards that blue. Honestly, every time it comes on, both of us are like, "Yes, that yes. blue. Give me that yeah. one." Yeah, and, and here we are again. I mean, this is a <laughs> blue. Oh, With don't that get blue for Rosanna. Why? So much has been done already in such a short amount of time. This is very cool. Uh, cool. I love the stark contrast of this silhouette in this ethereal plane. And just checking out uh, the kind of soft application here, I'm now realizing that this is spray paint. Because uh, I was wondering how Rosanna got such a beautiful gradient in the background sky of her first round qualifying. And uh, so now the secret is revealed. Uh, Rosanna is using a water-based spray. No kidding. Oh, you're not driving anywhere. No kidding. We're getting a little bit. Got the of, apron. Jeez. We're getting a little bit of some uh, robot-y action from you, Tyson. Do you want to try uh, logging out and then coming back in? Looks like we've got a bit of a delay here. Brief pause on the live stream. Green. And the addition here of all of these uh, little birds. Supporting local arts. Now it's time to support local bartenders. Grab a cocktail, grab a CBD, grab something. Such a beautiful and careful application technique here and as great use of compositional space already from Rosanna with the birds just kind of floating upwards into the sky. Moving over here to Ryan Schumann, who was our artist that did that absolutely incredible typography piece in the first or in the second round, but his qualifying round. And looks like we're being treated to more typography goodness uh, from Ryan. And we can just see this look of super concentration as he's laying down these very, very clean lines. Just so thoughtful uh, in his execution techniques. And I love the way that Ryan uh, is very considerate of the way that he builds out a painting. Tyson, what are your thoughts on this piece? Uh, and another bodyscape painting from Sabrina here. Although this time we're getting a little bit more of a back view in her first round qualifying piece, we had uh, very much a side view. We've got a little bit more of a three quarter turn going on here right now and still staying very much in the monochrome in our first seven minutes. Uh, and now getting into the shadow work of the legs and some of that really just beautiful use of weight of line from Sabrina. The way that uh, she adds thicker and thinner lines is so indicative of her style and uh, really makes this piece quite identifiable uh, just from the way that she applies these lines. Tyson, what are we thinking of Sabrina's piece? 
I think that she uh, paints with a, a certain celebration of the, the form, uh, and I think that is something that resonates with a lot of people, and I think that'll serve well uh, tonight with the votes. Uh, and again, folks, if you haven't cast your vote, please do so. Uh, you know, we, we appreciate the ones who have uh, cast the votes tonight. And you can register to vote at the link that's on your screen, artbell.com slash AB2467. And also all of the works created tonight are up for silent auction at that same link. You don't need to be in the room to collect them. We will ship them to you. Uh, moving over to Wendy here. Uh, Tyson, thoughts on the addition of our bird over top of this abstract? I think it's super cool to create a, a figure grounded in reality, you know, a real uh, a real noun, I suppose. You know, we've got ourselves a noun here in this uh, <laughs> m mysterious uh, abstract ethos. The beautiful uh, uh, purple martin almost, or it kind of looks like a, a woodpecker in the in the profile but beautiful bird love the hue yeah and the way that it's just really interacting with the abstract environment often i find when artists are layering um something figurative or over top of abstract it just kind of exists over top um but i feel uh, like yeah. the bird is really participating in the environment i think that's a great way of putting it uh, participating because the flow of the beak and the flow of the wind of uh, the wing are totally right uh, right in the uh in the theme of this sort of uh, flowy composition. And I, you know, I have to say, I'm, I'm sort of noticing almost like a similar kind of um, a similarity between the approach here and on Ryan's painting in, in, the, in the kind of very long and, uh, you know, swooping strokes. Yeah, there's a, a little bit of visual communication there with uh, with that line work. I I totally see that, and I wouldn't have seen it at all. Yeah, but I can't wait to see where this goes, and uh, you know, if, if more uh, animals will arrive on the on the canvas there in the next ten minutes, we shall see. This is so cool. I love what she's done with the uh, black and white contouring of the woman's figure here in the foreground. Uh, sort of an unlikely execution to use the white lines uh, to, to to create the uh, the drawing of the, the the details. Yeah, those little hits of highlight, um, and then the way that Rosanna has carried that over stylistically onto the birds as well. Mm hmm And even overly, you know, stylistic clouds as well. There's like a hyper-realism about it that makes it kind of um, almost disconcerting. Like there's something, it's peaceful, but there's also, there's, it seems to be almost like something forlorn about it. Yeah, and that's introducing that element um, that we were talking about earlier, that kind of intangible tension. Mm-hmm, the intangible tension, exactly. Oh my god, the cloud going over top of the figure? What? Yeah, plot twist. Is she a giant? Such or a plot twist. Tiny clouds. <laughs> it really brings this piece into more of a surreal space. Uh, just the addition of the clouds that are interacting with the body. That's very cool. Very cool, absolutely. A wonderful plot twist uh, here with eight and a half minutes left of this final round of Art Battle San Francisco. Ooh, and I think I start to see a little bit of uh, star speckling as well, which is hey, what works. Rosanna was doing. Uh... Oh, what's going on there? Are you okay, able to do that? I, I think I, I think it might have said Cali. Very. We cool. shall see. Another artist has tapped into the typography realm and back to the master of the craft himself, Brian. Uh, wow, creating a very uh, surprising 
surprising composition here with the eyeball here in the center that is it, that is an innovative use of the letters to create the actual shape and contour of this shape so cool uh blowing my mind right now totally thought that he was just going to be doing uh concentric typography and then the added reveal of it actually being an eyeball is like blowing my mind right now absolutely actively my mind is being blown right now it's such a surprise but i suppose we underestimated the degree to which he can uh you know really utilize the canvas and create an interesting composition similarly to what he did in the uh in, the, in his first round with the uh tape revealing uh tape um the tape revealing stripes rather and something else that I'm really enjoying about watching Ryan is how much he uses his body to create the lines. You know, he's not just using his hand. His whole body is like taut with tension to create this level of control. Yeah, that's true. And it makes me uh, imagine him holding a spray can in, in a similar kind of way. Be oh, and here we are. Look at that. Perfect. I feel like Ryan's going to be sore after this. Like, this is like very physical painting. Totally. Well, what a fascinating uh, range of effects it creates. And, and still, again, uh, so distinctly remaining in the uh, monochrome or in the, uh, in the, in the two-tone. And speaking of our monochrome elements, back with Sabrina here, who is using uh, that predominant black and white, and then now introducing these hits of color. Yeah, I think a little bit more of a range of color uh, in this painting, in this uh, offering tonight from uh, in this round from Sabrina here, but uh, also it's sort of a different approach to the form as well. Like there's a little bit more. Um, looseness with the the de definition of the shapes and the form uh and the previous one was a little bit more like structured almost which yeah is cool. there's more of like an embracing of organic quality i think here mm -hmm. those hits of yellow are so nice yeah, I love those in the blue and the red as well. Like it's uh, very cool, very cool. You know, and it's uh, perhaps a piece that we can all relate to. You know, we've all got bums and uh, maybe this is just sort of a, a, a friendly reminder of the, the, the things that unify us. <laughs> Everybody has a bum. Uh, and something that I'm actually just kind of noticing right now is that the figure's arms are upstretched as well in the same way that they were in uh, Sabrina's first round qualifying. And there's like mm -hmm. a celebratory nature to that. And it also allows her to really highlight the curves of the figure um, without having to kind of, mm -hmm. without the arms being in, in the way. Interesting uh, yeah. pose there. That's true. Whoa, Wendy. Wendy, how's it going? Wendy. Killing it. Now I'm realizing that the way that these lines are, they create sort of vectors now towards the central conflagration of colors here, what appears to be some sort of color explosion. Yeah, there's uh, just so much going on here, and I'm really enjoying the kind of minimalist treatment of the background being very clean and flat, and then the introduction of all of this uh, color and texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a real um, contrasting of these uh, elements, and it's very, but they're still cohesive. Over California Freeman. 
let fun when you're dreaming. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it, but. Uh, so good. So good. And there, definitely so good and illustrated poll. Mm hmm. This is a place that you can imagine having a place on, on a wall somewhere uh, in your home. You know, it's a, a nice conversation piece and it certainly creates a, a tone and a sort of an atmosphere, uh, a certain tranquility again. Yeah, Rosanna has this really wonderful ability to uh, create works that have an environment that communicates an emotion. Mm -hmm. I love a good environment in a painting. And this, you know, if, how would you describe the environment created here, Morgan? I feel like there's like a descent into madness kind of thing going on from uh, Ryan's piece. The way that mm -hmm. we're getting this uh, like spiral downward and all of this overlap it's uh there's definitely tension within this piece and it's highly engaging absolutely engaging and intriguing and entertaining gosh that darn piece it. is metal that piece is metal is the way that i would describe it or absolutely so clean uh on the margins of sabrina's piece in the final minute, bringing it home. And she's actually been, uh, she signed it like five minutes ago as well, which I think is uh, such a great confidence move. That's so true. No turning back, really. 30 seconds, y'all. Give a round of applause. 30 seconds. Let's see you know, I love the, uh, yeah, the, the dispersion of the flashes of color. It almost kind of creates a, a sense of that she's, you know, reflecting or capturing, uh, catching light from, uh, you know, unseen sources. Yeah, the way that it's just kind of skimming over the body. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, Gimbal, Gimbal Gonzo. <laughs> Gimbal Gonzo. And that is the round. Holy smokes. Round three has come to a triumphant close. And these painters have brought again an amazing offering each to the audience here at Art Battle San Francisco. Yeah, what a final, uh, especially for our season opener. I love uh, that we've had so many strong artists with very strong, like opinionated styles. Uh, I think that everyone was really true to their own style tonight. And I didn't see any crowd pandering pieces. I think everyone had this really organic, unique point of view. I think you're so right about that. And that is certainly one of the wonderful characteristics of art battles to be able to see such a range of, of styles and approaches. And, uh, you know, I got to say, this is this is one of my favorites, you know, and though I'm not from California and the words don't necessarily mean too, too much to me, I think the execution is just pretty cool and I think the composition composition is nice and like the, the the effect of the clouds that are covering her kind of adds to the dreaminess of it all. And even the way that the figure is leaning forward a little bit as she's releasing the birds, there's like this hopefulness in that movement. That's a really good point. Good observation. And here with Ryan. Such intensity. It's such intensity. And we were kind of diving into it to like digest what it was. It's, there's tension and there seems to be like, it's almost like anxiety or, you know, conflict or... Chaos. Oh, man. Yeah, but there, it's so cool that he had um, done the overpainting with the, the larger white strokes on top of it all in the kind of the last moments. They really add like in another layer of it all. And that's what, what is so effective about it is the 
several layers. It really draws in the eye and it draws in the imagination of the viewer. Absolutely. Uh, that was a big changing factor for me with the piece that um, kind of took it out of being more of a design-centric painting to being something that was um, just pushed it a little bit into more of a captivating space. Definitely. Sabrina is sure to capture some votes tonight. Uh, again, you know, this is uh, a, cr a crowd pleaser. You know, this is the appreciation of uh, a beautiful human form here. And uh, certainly the kind of thing that um, people at home will enjoy as well as people there uh, live tonight in San Francisco. Oh, definitely. This piece uh, is definitely very collectible also in that I think it's one of those that is just going to keep uh, giving and the way that you're engaging with the piece and your eye is just bouncing around to all of these little moments and pops of color and texture. Mm -hmm. And voting, uh, the votes are pouring in and it is quite close. So head over to artbattle.com slash AB2467 and make sure that you cast your vote because every vote really, truly does count. And the top artist from tonight will be the first qualifier of this new season of Art Battle in San Francisco to move forward to the city finals taking place in 2024. So very exciting. Exciting is the word, and it has been such an exciting event tonight. And all of your votes count. So thank you so much for participating uh, tonight so far. Uh, the night is not done. We are soon to announce the victor of the night of the season opener in San Francisco. Oh my gosh. I'm even just noticing in the bird in all of the uh, the color pieces leading up to it, there's like micro texture within those as well. Big fan of micro texture. And uh, I think we're seeing, seeing some of that micro texture here in the sky and in the clouds. Um, Especially with the metallic. I, I think when we were actively within the stream, I don't think I realized that there were elements of metallic within this piece. But now uh, at this angle, I'm getting to see the real shine that's coming off of it. Oh, that's awesome. I just feel like there's an eye that's an eyeball in the middle of this that's peeking out. Me too. Like we've got the spiral, but it's definitely also giving eyeball. <laughs> definitely giving eyeball right now, which I guess creates, um, contributes to the sense of tension in this is that it, it looks almost identifiable. It's like what you were saying earlier that we, you know, secret representation uh, in, uh, in, a, in an image and we aim to make sense of it and identify things with it but uh, perhaps it's just words in a circle who knows who knows only ryan uh, uh we're not here earlier on morgan is a fantastic painter in her own right and so be sure to check out her instagram at morgan booth art it's dope oh thanks so much oh we're getting our winner announcement a woo And that one is, from all please, <laughs> Wendy Tatum! Congratulations, Wendy, you have won our prize and get to participate in the finals, maybe even the nationals. Who the hell knows? Congratulations! Now we're going to be turning off those ring lights. We're going to give you all time to bid and view all of the beautiful art that was created tonight live. It's rated live for your entertainment. Please bid on local art. Please support your local artists. And uh, yeah, happy time.
And our winner has been announced, Wendy Tratner. A huge congratulations to Wendy uh, for the creation of two just absolutely stunning, super engaging pieces and for earning her place now in the San Francisco City Final in June or in 2024. So huge congrats to Wendy Tratner. Absolutely, you know, and we talked earlier on about uh, the strategic choice to draw up upon some very distinctive imagery, and she chose this beautiful bird, executed it, executed it wonderfully, uh, and clearly won the favor of the audience tonight. Just so much joy infused in her paintings as well and uh, it's just so wonderful to get to see her as she celebrates her win and uh, just really expressing the joy of her win as well totally it's so fun to watch them all celebrate celebrate and rejoice um and uh, the uh, the joy has clearly spread from the beautiful painting to the uh, the beautiful uh, folks and presence Thank you so much to everyone who joined us on the stream. Uh, we love hanging out with you guys and chatting about art. And thank you so much to Tyson for all of your unique insights and excitement uh, that you've brought to the stream tonight. We really appreciate it. I appreciate that, Morgan. It's been a, a real blast. So thanks again for everybody who was tuning in and thanks for having me art battle.